I want to get paid now. And that's what 2024 is about because mm -hmm. you're going to get called a grifter no matter what you do. Exactly. But I'm Lila Hart. Hey guys, I'm really happy to uh, welcome to the podcast a, uh, a comedian. She's a Filipina American. Her name is Lila Hart. I am uh, Donald Trump's wife. Too. This is weird. He likes it. Oh! 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 Wow, my shot is so good. Folks, you need to watch the history of voter fraud. This is an amazing two-hour film. This lady and her husband that put together are incredible. This information is being censored and needs to get out. Thank you. I'm with the great Alex Jones. What the f is this movie even? Sex is overrated. Bitch, please. Put the gun down, Lila. Put the gun down. Get down on your knees. Lila, put Get on your knees. Oh, Guys, I'm back from the bathroom. I've been snorting pixie sticks. And you didn't expect my little ass to just pop in there and be like, who the <laughs> fuck is in my spot? And then he fucking knew. He fucking knew. All I had to say was, who the hell is parked in my spot, bitch? <laughs> <Ow>! <laughs> that was so close. Lila. <laughs> oh, Lila, stop. We're way hotter than them. They're fucking ugly. And we're going to have that really I want us to lose. You want to be hot or ugly? Are you hot or are you ugly? Yay, I'll be double fisting too. <laughs> <laughs> I am a firearms instructor. Stop. Better hit that like and subscribe button. Hit the like and subscribe button. <laughs> Do it now. Hit the like and subscribe button. Do it, it now. Even, even voice actors can have parasocial relationships. What people were like recognizing his voice, not his face. Uh, because like when you voice act, you're in the booth alone. So like you never so like when you meet the voice actor, they don't necessarily know it's you. So what do they do? Just like listen until they find <laughs> <laughs> sounds complicated. <laughs> I've been told I have a face for voice acting. Chris, you have a face for everything. All right. That's a joke. A face for bukkake. <laughs> what? <laughs> Best immediate. I don't care that we'll never be invited back. I'm having fun. Stop it! Stop it! I'm not eating! I'm not eating your chest fucking shit! No, you have to take at least three. Go fuck your goddamn self! Get out of my motherfucking house! Sorry. Why do you use that language in front of me? I'm tired of this gun rap in my home! He's frustrated! Yeah! Have you ever just had one of those days where you just think to yourself, like, damn, it's a good ass day. The sun is shining. You get off work early. Praise Jesus, because you're just feeling blessed. It's days like today you got to be thankful for because you don't know the hell tomorrow could bring. Praise Jesus, because you just feeling blessed. That's right. We're feeling blessed tonight because I'm a runner. I'm a track star. Look at me. Does it look like I'm about to go? Work out. Mm, 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 mm. Did you guys see that punch? A punch, Darius. Pow, 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 pow. Don't mess with me. I might be disabled, but these arms are not disabled, bitch. I could fuck you up. Pow, 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 pow. Welcome to Late Night Lila with your host, the one with the most heart in this bitch. It's me. Lila Hart, and I'm so grateful for all 11 of my sweethearts who are in the chat. What is up? We've got Spectral in the house. We've got Saw. We've got Prob Joe who says, hi, sweethearts. That's right. Prob Joe is the president of the Sweetheart Fan Club. Lila Hart Fan Club. She's the president. She shares that title with my mom, Esperanza Hart. All right, and don't forget to hit that like button. And yes, Saw says, share that stream. That's what you're going to do. Share this stream. But you know what? Or don't share it. It's fine. This could just be an intimate conversation between me and the 12 of y'all. Like the 12 disciples. Because I am a leader of the cult. 
Okay, the heart cult. You guys want to join my cult? I think you should join my cult. My cult is cool. I'm an alien. That's why I look like this. Could you imagine if I just unzipped myself? I'd be like, surprise, bitches. I've been an alien this whole time. I'm an alien. I'm from the planet. What is the name of my home planet? It's called Purpletron. It's a planet of purple beings. And I'm actually purple. I'm purple. I'm, a, I'm not blue, da ba dee ba but I'm a purple. That's I'm a purple person. I'm a purple person. Okay, I got to show you guys what's going on here. Look, I've got hella drinks. Look at all my drinks. I've got one, two, three, four, and then just a, a an empty cup. Okay, but I've got four drinks. First, I've got my healthy, healthy kombucha. I got kombucha. Then I've got my teas, my positivities, and I've got my wata, 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 uh, 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 uh. What drink does Bruce Lee like to drink? He likes to drink wata, wata, uh, uh. Okay, great. Ah, she's a rhinestone cowgirl. You guys like my hat? I'm feeling festive. This is my Valentine's Day look. Actually, this is just my everyday look. Thank you. You like my tracksuit? Because I'm a runner. I'm a track star. I'm not really a runner. I can't run very far. In fact, I can't run at all. I can't. I'm not I'm not a runner. I can't. I, I can hobble and limp. But as far as running goes, that is not my skill set. I'm not a runner. I'm not. Okay. You know what I am, though? I'm a motherfucking princess. That's what I am. I'm a princess, bitch. I'm a princess. I'm a princess. Abel is in the house. What up, Abel? What time did you do your comedy show yesterday? I missed it. I'm sorry. It's okay. Ah, uh, you only left me broken hearted. That's what you did to me, Abel. You left me broken hearted. Because you didn't come to my show. But it's okay. I have shows all the time. Yeah. She's a runner. She's a track star. Okay, that's stuck in my head. Okay, here. Let's put this back, my crown, my hat, because you guys already know what time it is. Here it is. This is, I am currently streaming from Dallas, Texas, baby. We are in Dallas, Texas. It is 10.53 p.m. in Dallas, Texas. It is a late night. It's a late night. But it's only because... We're on Late Night Lila, so that's why this stream is Late Night. And uh, let me know where you are watching from. Where are you guys tuning in from? Put it in the chat. Let us know. Are you in Dallas? Are you in Texas? Are you in South Korea? Because we know you ain't in North Korea. Because if you were in North Korea and you had access to the inter internet, you'd probably be executed. So we know you are not in North Korea, but you might be in South. Okay. Florida checked in. That's right. We got Pennsylvania in the house. Little philosophy is watching from the toilet. You know what? That's great. I hope you are taking a nice, healthy, massive dump and your digestive system is a working correctly. So yes, please watch from the toilet. We don't mind. We love that. We love a good, healthy digestive system. Praise Jesus. If you can take a shit, you are very blessed, my friend. There are things in this world like pissing and shitting that people take for granted. If you can take a piss on your own and you could take a shit on your own, I mean, that is a gift. That is a true miracle. What's up? Yo, Lila. Hey, Welshie. Welshie, where are you watching from? You in the UK? What's up? Welshie. Saw says hello. Yep, it is true. It is true. There, you know what? I got to tell you guys, little things we take for granted. I uh, watched this little documentary on this blind cat. This cat ain't had no eyes. Okay, this cat had no eyes. It was a little documentary that I came up on my Facebook feed, and this cat had no eyes. But it was a sweet cat. It would purr. I was crying because I was like, "Oh my gosh, this cat is blind," and we take for granted the gift of sight. Okay, to see, to be able to see is a gift. And 
How many times do you waste the gift of sight, hating on other people on Instagram, hating on people on the internet, wishing that you had what they had? It's like, you know what? You should be just be grateful you can even see the shit that you're jealous of. You should be grateful you can even see that. Because if you didn't, if you couldn't see, you couldn't be a hater because you'd be blind. You'd be, you'd be missing your sight. So just be grateful that you can see. All right. What's up? Deranged lunatic in the house. Good to have you. Oh my gosh, you guys, we have a lot to cover. Wow. Uh, I haven't seen you in a minute. What has it been like three days? I don't know. When was the last late night Lila? I'm not sure because this show does not have a regular schedule. It just happens whenever it happens. So what you should do is make sure you hit not only that subscribe button, but that notification button so you can get that ding, 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 ding on your phone that lets you know Late Night Lila is happening tonight, okay? Oh, I got heart sunglasses on. You guys, I, I want to talk to you about a lot of stuff, but I also have food that I, I need to eat. So this is about to turn into a little bit of a mukbang. What'd you guys have for dinner? I'm going to show you what I'm having right now. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at this. I got meat. I got meat and potatoes. I got potatoes and meat. I'm excited. I don't know why I have a knife. <coughs> Sorry. I can't help it. Do you ever just like grab a knife and like, er, 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 er. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. okay, let's stop that. So these mashed potatoes, so good. This is turning into monk bat, a muck bang. Talk amongst yourselves. Let me know what you had for dinner. Prof Joe said she had scallops. Ooh, yes, protein. Well, she says, that's why the West is fucked. A lot of people in the West are not grateful in it nowadays. You know what? Yeah, we got to be grateful. Christ pilled and blessed stream. You got to be grateful. Grateful you could see. Grateful you could taste. Grateful you could eat. You can ingest stuff. There are people in the world who can't eat on their own. They literally have, you know, they have to have like a tube and the food has to be smushed around and then put in the tube. If you can move your mouth and eat, that's a blessing. Mm. I had homemade chicken noodle soup. Nice. Did you make it deranged lunatic? This is, um, this is a dog meat, so it's my neighbor's pug. I had two sausage, then buffalo chicken sub and lobster roll. Wow, you're living large over here. Oh, God, it's so good. I don't want to eat too much. But okay, I have so much to tell you guys. Where should we start? Well, let's just start. We'll go backwards. Oh, my night. Um, first of all, I made my first appearance on Normal World. So I was at The Blaze two days in a row. I was on Alex Stein's show for a Valentine's Day special. And then I was on uh, Normal World tonight. So let's do a shared screen. If I can show you guys things. I'm going to show you things. We're going to watch stuff together. It's going to be so great. See? Oh, wow. Okay. So here's what's exciting. Eventually, when I upgrade my studio, I'm going to have two screens. So I can, like, look at stuff here and then look at stuff here. And I'll have to, I have to see what the hell's going on. Because right now, I don't even know what the hell's going on. Do you? Mm. That is a lot. There's a lot of protein. A lot of calories. Okay. I'm so hungry. Okay. You guys, I just learned something on um, Twitter. I just learned how to bookmark things to make it easier. Because normally when I'm showing you stuff on my Twitter, I'm over here um, like, just like scrolling, scrolling, scrolling just to find the goddamn thing. But we don't have to do that today. Okay. Okay. How cute is this? So I was on Alex Stein's show last night with the teacher who she got fired from being a teacher for starting an OnlyFans. And I think this was her second appearance on the show. 
So she had an OnlyFans for a while. And uh, now she's quitting OnlyFans and she's going to be, she's going back to teaching. But she was really pleasant. She was really sweet. Also, none of us were told the memo to wear pink, but we just all happened to wear pink, which I love. And this is a cute picture. I love this because she's like using the shake weight, which I also have like a funny video of it. And I have to tell you guys some exciting news. Guess what I just ordered? <laughs> a shake weight. I ordered a shake weight because we are going to do some shake weight exercises. I used to own a shake weight a woman's shake weight in college. And it actually does like, it does wonders for your arms. Okay. And like I said, I may be disabled, but these arms aren't disabled and I got to mm, 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 keep them strong. So I can self-defense. Okay. So let me show you. Oh, look how cute this is. We'll go back to the video or the sharing. Here it is. Okay cute. There's me and Alex. Oh, I also brought everybody sunglasses. Um, that's kind of like my thing now. I think it's gonna be part of my merch. I'll be selling sunglasses at my comedy shows. These cute like red heart sunglasses because you know what? We got to block the haters with the glasses. And who doesn't look so cute in freaking heart glasses? So there's Alex and me and he, he had a pink tie, which I thought was awesome. There's Chris Darby. Chris! It's awesome. Uh, he did not get the pink memo. He should have been wearing pink because it's Valentine's Day. So look how cute my outfit was. Um, this jacket, fun fact, was actually a jacket that Chrissy Mayer sent to me on my birthday, July 14th. If you guys don't know my birthday, it's July 14th. It's the same birthday as SpongeBob SquarePants. Mm, mm -mm. Did you guys know that? Did you know that me and SpongeBob have the same birthday, huh? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Wow. It's going to be amazing that, like, someday there's going to be, like, 15,000 people watching in this stream. And the stream is going to go, like, doo -doo 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 -doo. it's super fast. But these times are really sweet. There's just, like, 14 of us in here. We're just, like, really, like, intimate. We're just, like, might as well be, like, a FaceTime call, which I love. Mm-mm-mm. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, David says, I would like a blue pair of those shades next summer in SD. You know what I'm talking about. For little people of America, that winky smiley face, David. <laughs> that makes it sound like you know what I'm talking about. Like something like, you know what I'm talking about, girl. I need them blue sunglasses, girl, you know? But um little people of america is gonna be in san diego and you guys i'm going i'm gonna go to little people of america when it's in san diego because god i love san diego i love san diego mm -mm 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 -mm. awesome i will be doing a spartan race on your birthday well that is incredible i'm super proud of you Spartan races are not easy. Just like pimping ain't easy. You know what I mean? Spartan races are not easy. Okay, let's go back to my cute outfit. You guys, look how cute these boots are. I had sparkly boots, a really cute skirt, and my little spanking wad, or my little sp heart spanky thing. That's like a, a little wand where you can spank people if they're naughty. So I also brought that for the show. Then, okay, this is, oh, this is from Normal World. This, I was on Normal World with um, Mo at Flaw TV and Quarter Black Garrett. Here's another fun fact. You guys, this is a really cool fun fact. Me and Flawed have the same birthday, July 14th. He is my birthday twin, and he is also extremely talented. I do not think that is a coincidence, okay? He's very talented, rapper, musician, just person. And we have the same birthday. So, I mean, you know, when I see him win, I'm like, that's that's us winning. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, so I'm just going to go all over the place. Um. Oh, and I brought my dad with me to the studio. Here's me and my dad. Look at my blue sunglasses. 
I wore the blue sunglasses. I gave everybody a pair of sunglasses so we could all just be like, you know, looking cute. There we are on the set. There's my dad and me on the set. And look, Claude had the purple, Mo had the pink, and Quarter Black had the green. Look, excited to be on Normal World with my birthday twin. Okay. So, yeah, it was uh, it was so much fun um, being on on the show with them was so much fun. Um, we talked about a whole bunch of things, but one thing in particular we talked about was not apologizing for comedy jokes. I don't know if you guys I've played this for you before, but we are going to uh, um, play this. It, this is a clip for me, Little Women LA, in 2016. This is a young, vibrant, 24-year-old Lila who looks exactly like me. So this is technically like just a week ago. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. This is in 2016. For context, um, I was performing for the ladies of Little Women. I was so excited to do this performance. I was like six months, maybe eight months in a comedy at this point. I don't know. I think I, I talked about how long it was. Um, and I remember right before I was going to perform for the girls, I was like, am I going to do my little people jokes, my midget jokes? Am I going to do that? And I was like, absolutely, I am going to do it because I think they're going to appreciate my jokes. If anybody is going to appreciate my disability – midget jokes it's gonna be them because i'm like dude they'll be able to relate to it and it's gonna be awesome but that is not what went down and we will watch what went down let's let's see how the girls reacted to my stand up hey guys hey. thank you so much for coming to the show hi, hi. so this is brianna hi. this hi. is tanya hi. hi how you doing good i'm so happy you guys came out how thank long have you, you been doing comedy um, about a year, but I love it. You use the M word quite a lot in your stand up. Is that something that you're trying to be provocative? The you reason know? that I use the word is because I want to take ownership of it and no one else can use it to make me feel bad. But when you have people like us in the audience, uh -huh. it we we don't take power of it like that. I think the way it came across was like it's okay to be called but a midget. I feel like I'm taking away the negative from it and I'm adding humor in it. No, you're not taking the negative away. You're not taking it away. When you see an average sized person say their jokes, we can't always relate to that. You know, do you get what I'm saying? Like, you can relate when I say I'm as tall as an LA parking meter. It's, no, it's no, comedy. No, no, it's funny. no, no, that wasn't funny. Or just say sex in the backseat. We could do it in the glove box. <laughs> it's funny. I'm not doing that to hurt your feelings, but you would think that you guys would be able to relate to it and in a comedic manner. Unfortunately, people take that and think this is okay. And it's not. It just needs a different spin on how you portray it. This is the first time that I have ever had anyone tell me that my jokes can offend people. I've never had anybody say this to me. Oh no, I was muted. Ah, I muted myself. I muted myself because I was chomping on meat. I don't know if you guys wanted to hear me chomping on the meat while I was talking about, or while you guys were watching that clip. Okay, so what I'm going to say, I'll say it again. My favorite part about that clip was when I was crying because <laughs> it's very funny for me to watch that now eight years later. Um, because now if I was going to have that conversation, I wouldn't cry, but you know, it's when you're 24, like things are a lot more emotional. Uh, and also it just, it, it felt like a lot, like it felt like, okay, imagine you're like meeting people 
who you're inspired by and like, you're like, oh my God, these women are so awesome. And then they like turn on you and you're like, wait, they don't like me? Like, what the fuck? And so the part that makes me laugh, it was like, I'm literally crying. And when I'm like, you say fuck sex in the backseat, we can do it in the glove box. Like, don't you think that's funny? I'm like, I'm literally crying, like saying my hilarious punchline, which is just, it's fucking funny. I mean, it's it's really funny. And then I love the part where they're like, they show me like, I have never had anyone say that to me before. And I do like my hair flip. Because I mean, my God, I looked good. I looked fucking great. Like my makeup was on point. My hair was on point. That was in my blonde era. Um, Was it rehearsed or all for real? That shit was for real. That shit was so for real. That was not fucking rehearsed. You guys, I was... <laughs> Here's what's crazy. I performed stand-up for them. I did about, I think I did like a 15-minute set. And then um, they're like, okay, the girls are going to sit outside. They're going to get some drinks. And then we'll bring you out because they were setting up the cameras. And I walk out there and they're already sitting. And as I'm approaching, I could feel, I was like, oh, this is not, I don't think they, I could already feel something was up. It just felt off because they had been out there for a while before I was out there or invited to come out. And at first I thought I was like, oh, they're just going to like set up the cameras or whatever. But like, no, you know, when you just, you walk into a room and you can get that vibe. You're like, oh, these people don't like me. Like something is up. And again, like I said, I, right before I was going to perform for them, I really thought to myself, I was like, okay, am I going to do am I, am I going to say midget on stage? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to say it. Cause it's first of all, the joke is really good, and I believe in the joke, okay? So I'm going to say it. Um, I didn't think it was going to offend them. I truly didn't think it was going to offend them because I was like, they're on a show called Little Women LA, you know, where literally they're all on the show because of their height, and they're showcasing the fact that, like, it doesn't matter if you're four foot six. Like, you could still be a badass bitch, like, living your life, getting married, dating, like, having regular drama with people. And I was like, they're going to be cool as fuck. I mean, like, if they're comfortable enough to be on a show called Little Women – then they should be comfortable enough to be at a comedy show, you know? So um, I did talk about this on Normal World, which I thought was great. And Eric uh, clipped it out. I will play what I said on that clip for you guys. One second. Let me sc- – oh, wait. There's more pictures. I, th- I already showed you guys the pictures. Okay. Let me play uh, for the audience that doesn't know that's uh, being born with a congenital – Okay. So I talked about – on normal world, we're gonna play it. Here you go. What I have is spina bifida, and uh, for the audience that doesn't know, that's uh, being born with a congenital birth defect. It's like being born with a spinal cord injury. So most people with my condition, there's like it's like a, it is a snowflake disability because there's so many mm-hmm. different things that could happen. But when I was born, doctors told my parents I'd never be able to walk. I wouldn't live past the age of 13, and um, I would have like learning disabilities. Right, so. I, I am able to walk, which is truly a gift and a yeah, miracle, even though I do kind of walk with a limp, but that is just my gangster lens. I walk with yeah, a limp. You just like walk like a pimp. Oh, yeah. It's my pimp. Yeah. My pimp but um, when I, before I did stand up, I was really trying, I mean, I did stand up so I would be able to talk about my disability and kind of mm-hmm. um, heal myself. So for me, like using the M word in my stand up midget was for a long time, that word really hurt my feelings. And mm-hmm. I was like, if I can go on stage and I can say spina bifida, I can, I can say midget, I can say disabled, it'll take away the power from those words. And I, and I don't give them power anymore over me. Yeah. And I can walk into a room and just own it and be myself. You That's know, literally so. what happened when I saw you stand up i was yes. like i didn't know what to say and then you just started going off and i was like oh she's a real yes. person yeah. like Aww. it made you humanize it's like a connection right. with you even if you when it's you crazy. don't know you yeah. I, I had a comedy show last night and this woman who was sitting in the front row she came up to me after the show and she's like i just wanted to tell you that i have a 20 year old son who's born with spina bifida and watching you perform like it just really made her feel good and it's like every time a moment like that happens mm-hmm. to me when someone will tell me about their own experience with disability or their own experience just feeling so different it makes me just so grateful for Absolutely. this gift of comedy and yep. it's like as comedians it's like we shouldn't apologize for jokes okay like these 
these jokes are a way for us to heal like like our own personal trauma and it's like i'm not doing this comedy to hurt your feelings i'm actually doing this comedy to heal my own inner world and this is like an art form that we get to share together in this moment and it's like the thing I love about stand up so much is it's just you and the microphone in that moment. And I think that we're in a world now where people want to cancel you, want to force you to apologize. And it's like, mm -hmm. never apologize for a joke because once you start apologizing for jokes, they'll just keep coming after you more and more right. and more. Anyways, I am so happy that we were able to have that conversation on uh, Normal World. And I, I could really like go more into depth of, um, the whole situation with little woman, little women, you know, um, I understand them for not liking the M word, not liking the word midget, because I know that there was a time in my life where, um, that word really did offend me because I wasn't comfortable with myself. And also because here's the thing, people weren't saying like, Oh, you don't associate that word with goodness. You're not saying like, Oh, she's a sexy ass midget or that's a fine ass midget or that's a rich midget. Like, no, it's, it's more of like, Oh, midget weird. You know what I mean? And, um, like I remember I was in college, I think it must've been my sophomore or junior year of college at Washington state university. And I was walking across the street to go to a party and I was with a group of my girlfriends and some frat guy yelled from across the street. He yelled, he was like, Oh my God, there's a midget over there. There's a midget. And my friends were like so upset. In fact, it seemed like they were more upset than me, you know, and I had to like comfort them. And it was this whole thing. And um, that's why I say it on stage. Cause it's like, you know, the word doesn't hurt me anymore. And like, I'm changing the, the I don't think I'm changing the meaning of it, but it's like, you know, I'm a fine ass midget. I'm the sexiest midget you're going to see. And the funniest midget you'll see. And it's almost like you say it yourself, then it's like it takes away people from saying it to hurt you. It's like you can't make me feel bad about a word that I already freaking use, you know? Exactly. Bridget the Midget was a person's stage name. And she fucking owned it. And we all know who she was, you know? So I think that there's you have to become secure enough within your own self. And it's like, again, we all have stuff. I'm sure all of us have some sort of trauma and some sort of uh, thing that makes, you know, it's like, it's not easy being a fucking human. It's, it's hard. And we're all dealing with shit. And again, for me, my outlet is stand-up comedy. And I feel like it's the ultimate form of like, you can't fuck with me. Because I'm already, I already make fun of myself and I say things about myself that are worse than anybody could say about me. And I turn them into an art. I turn them into comedy. And uh, that just is what makes, you know, stand up the best. And also it's like, don't apologize for a joke. If you start to apologize for jokes, um, it's like, where does it end? You know? And it's like, again, this comedy, I'm not doing stand-up to hurt your feelings. I'm doing this stand-up so that I can heal my inner child who has all this trauma, who like fucking felt bad about myself and felt ashamed of my disability. And by me healing that inner child of mine, it's like I can be, uh, I could just go out into the world and freaking own it. It's like a double-edged sword, like many things in society. Not everyone will accept, but there will always be those people around. And again, I am not upset with people who do get offended. But it is important to realize the reason that they are offended is because they haven't healed something within them and it feels like an, a personal attack to them. You know, like the first time I went to like a real comedy show at the Laugh Factory, I saw Adam Ray perform stand up and he made a joke about his midget buddy. And all he said was my midget buddy, Brad Williams, was fucking a stripper in the bathroom or something like that. And I remember sitting in my seat and literally just him saying the word midget. He wasn't he wasn't looking at me. He wasn't he was talking about his friend, but just him saying the word midget made me feel some type of way. 
And after the show, my friend was like, you need to go up to him and you need to tell him that it's not okay for him to use that word. And I was like, uh, absolutely not. I need to go home and figure out what is going on with me internally that a fucking word is inciting such a deep, like, anxiety. There's something going on with me. And that's a me problem. That's not a comedian's problem. You know, the comedian is actually making me aware of the fact that I've got some healing to do because if a word is fucking triggering you, you've got issues, bro. And that's something you need a therapy and figure out. Here's another thing I hate when people are like, oh, comedy is my therapy. No, no, no. Comedy is what you do after therapy. Comedy is an art. Comedy is taking that trauma and turning it into art. I'm not going up there and like, using the audience as my fucking therapy session. No, it's like, I've worked through this so well that now this can be presented as a joke and I can be so confident confident up here and fucking rock it. And to the point where you guys might not even believe that there was a time in my life that I wanted to fucking kill myself because of how embarrassed and ashamed how much I hated God for like how the fuck why God why did you make me disabled you know people become disabled later in life and I fucking was born like this what the fuck did I do I didn't even make a decision it's not like I got in a car drunk and got into an accident and that's why I'm disabled it's like no I was just all I did was be born so there was a time in my life where I was really angry. I really fucking hated God. And so for me now to be 32 years old and be at a point where I can go on stage, I can I can rock how I look, I can call my limp a fucking pimp walk or a gangster lean and actually feel good about myself, that took a lot of work and just, I guess, therapy, but more just self-work. And then I get to present that through the art of stand-up, which is just so fucking cool. And I think is, makes me so grateful. You know, I love, I love stand-up comedy. But again, if you are someone that is getting offended by what a stand-up comedian says or what anyone is saying online, that is a personal problem that you've got to figure out because words should not trigger you. They shouldn't trigger trigger you. Those are words, okay? And you have something internally that is going on. So don't apologize for a joke. If you apologize, never freaking ends. Aw, thank you. You don't look 32. I would have said 27. And that's another thing too. I think we should also like be proud of how old you are. Like I'm proud to be 32, Okay, do you know the lifespan for a person with spina bifida? The average lifespan is 41, 41 years old. So I'm not going to be ashamed of my age. My parents were told that I wouldn't live past the age of 13. And around the time I was like 12, 13, 14, I was going to a lot of doctor's appointments and I didn't realize why I was getting x-rays and, you know, just like scans and just getting checked up all the time. And my parents didn't tell me it was, oh, because doctors said you were going to die around this time and wanted to make sure that things were developing correctly. They didn't didn't tell me that. But again, every day is a fucking gift and you should be proud of how old you are and we shouldn't be ashamed. We spend too much in society glorifying youth, being like, oh, if you're not in your 20s, you're nothing. Like if you're in your 30s as a woman, you might as well fucking kill yourself. It's like, no, that's false. We should be proud to age because it's a fucking Gift. Oh, you're going to beat that, Lila. You're going to be in your 60s. Thanks. I hope I'm in my 80s or 100s. <laughs> uh, you are quite mature and genuine. I can tell. Also, thanks for including God and Jesus in this. And that's right. Now, you have to because I have to believe in something. I have to believe that God made me for a reason. And when I'm at a comedy show... And I get off stage and somebody comes up to me, like, like, which happened to me on Valentine's Day. This woman, she was sitting in the front. She was with her boyfriend and they came up to me. And because, you know, it's interesting when I when I mentioned I had spina bifida, I kind of saw her like kind of like make a face and kind of like, you know, just kind of like hold herself a little bit. And I was like, oh, my God, am I offending her? Like, you know, I was kind of worried. Am I offending her by saying I have spina bifida? She came up to me later and she told me that her son was born with spina bifida 
And when she was 19 weeks pregnant, she was at a doctor's appointment with her husband at the time who uh, they were, it was their one year wedding anniversary. She's 19 weeks pregnant. She gets told that her son is going to be born with this congenital birth defect called spina bifida. They didn't explicitly tell her to get an abortion, but they did say that 50% of the people who get this diagnosis do get abortions. And then they gave her a list of different states and areas that she could go to to abort her son if she uh, felt like that was going to be the right decision because they were telling her all these scary things that could happen with spina bifida. And I, I, her and I, we really shared a moment. And as she was like telling me this, like tears were kind of welling up in her eyes together because it's like she really understands the things that I joke about. And um, the fact that her son is 20 years old and he's doing amazing and he's in college and you know, it's like she was told that he might not live and that, in fact, she should fucking just maybe just abort and try again for a healthy baby. Because that's what people say. What do people say? They don't say, oh, I want a boy. I want a girl. They say, I want a healthy baby. I don't care if it's a boy or a girl as long as my baby's healthy. Well, I was not a healthy baby. I was born with a disability. And you know what? Just because your child's going to be disabled does not mean that they don't have the right to live. Could you imagine if my parents would have aborted me? You guys would not be watching Late Light Night Lila. There would be no sweethearts. There would be no stand-up comedian Lila Hart taking down these midget bitches, huh? That would not be happening if I was aborted. So choose life. This is a choose life uh, ad right now. It's choose life because every life is a gift. You know, it's truly a gift that we're all here. That's right, David. There would be no late night Lila. Um, let me show you guys the comedy show. Where did I bookmark it? I thought I did. Okay. I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Okay. I'm going to show you guys this cute little joke that I did. Do, do, do. I loved my outfit. So right after I was on uh, Alex's show, I drove over to TK's, which is a comedy club in Addison. I perform at regularly and I hosted their Valentine's Day show. So let's watch this little clip. so much fun. I had a great time. It was a packed out show. It was absolutely incredible. The crowd was great. There was um, a lot of couples because, you know, a Valentine's Day. Uh, but the craziest thing happened. So I did a 20 minute set. And then in the middle of my set, I have my bits about where I talk about being sober. Cause you guys, let's see how long have I been sober? Let me, let me tell you the exact amount of days. 416 days, you guys. My one-year anniversary anniversary of sobriety was December 27th, which also happens to be my grandfather's birthday. And uh, uh, December 27th, I hit one year. So now we're like, what, one year and like two months sobriety. And I'm talking real sobriety. No alcohol, no Adderall, no cocaine no marijuana, nothing. I'm still drinking coffee, but you know what I mean? Like it's, that's not, that's not cocaine. Okay. So anyways, I, uh, and that's another thing too. Why did I become an alcoholic? Why did I have all this substance abuse problems in my early twenties? Because I was dealing with the trauma of not being comfortable with the fact that I have a disability, not being comfortable with the fact that, um, 
you know, the world was uh, not so accepting, not being okay with the word midget. And I just needed to drink my pain away and snort cocaine. And um, anyways, I performed at TK's and I said on stage, I did my bit and then I was like, I miss cocaine. And the crowd laughed and it was great. And um, after I got off stage and I brought up the feature and then the headliner, I went to the bathroom and I went into the big disabled stall. Okay. I go into the big disabled stall and in the big disabled stall where, you know, where the, um, the freaking, where like the baby thing is, where the big, the baby changing table is on the baby changing table was like a dime bag, like this big a freaking cocaine. Okay. It was a white powdery miniature Ziploc baggy of cocaine in a little baggie. And it was sitting there, right there. And I, you guys, I picked it up and I examined it like this. I examined it like this and I was like, that is cocaine. And I kind of put it a little bit close to my face so I could get like a waft, you know, cause you, you can't smell the cocaine. Cause if you smell the cocaine, then you're doing the cocaine. But I wanted to get a waft. I wanted to know like, is this really cocaine? This, this ain't just like powder donut power. And I'm gonna tell you, I, I like this, I got a little waft. And it was 100% without a shadow of a doubt, cocaine. Okay. Put it back on the little changing table, took out my camera, started taking pictures of it. Like it was a goddamn photo shoot. I don't know why I needed to take so many motherfucking photos of it. By the time I was about to take the fourth photo, I was like, what are you doing? Why are you taking so many pictures? And I did have this thought. I was like, do I take the cocaine? Do I do the cocaine? Why did I just find this cocaine? I mean, this is a lot of cocaine. It was, it was enough to have a wild fucking night if that's what I wanted to do. And then I took a picture of the cocaine next to my, oh, my purse is over there, but my one year sobriety trip. And it was like the same size. And, uh, Anyways, I had so many thoughts that ran through my mind. I was like, do I take it? Do I give it to somebody? Do I try to sell it? I mean, like these are the thoughts that are running through my mind. And I'm like, um, absolutely not. I don't want to give it to anybody. I don't want to tell anybody about it. I don't want to be a part of someone's relapse. I don't want to lead someone else into, you know, fucking destruction. I actually sent pictures to Probjo, who's in this chat. I sent her pictures of the cocaine. She calls me immediately, gives me a great Probjo pep talk. And is like, okay, you're not going to do this cocaine. We got to stay sober. I mean, she was she was great. I'm so glad that she called uh, and gave me that like, you know, just like that that pep talk of like, don't fucking do it. Put the baggie down. Leave it. So that's exactly what I did. I put the baggie down where I saw it and I left. And uh, I got to tell you guys this. I My heart was pounding. My heart was pounding like I had done cocaine because it, it's almost like muscle memory. You know what I'm saying? It's like that muscle memory of like, I've done so much cocaine in my life that if I, I get that close to cocaine, I start feeling like I've done fucking cocaine. Even me talking about the cocaine right now is making me feel like I'm on goddamn cocaine because that is how much cocaine I have ingested. I've done so much cocaine. I mean, I must be like a cockroach or something because it is a goddamn miracle that I'm alive. You know what I mean? Like that's how much cocaine I've done. Random cocaine to just from random people. I remember one time I was driving down the Sunset Strip on my way to the comedy store. I was on my way to Crack 'Em Up Thursdays, which is a show that happens in the belly room every Thursday. It's run by Michelle Murdoch. Murdoch and, um, I was driving down Sunset and a black SUV pulls up next to me. There was a man. I don't even know what he looked like. I can't even remember what he looked like. He rolls down his window. I rolled down mine because I was like getting this like vibe of something. And he was like, hey, do you want to do some cocaine? Like, you're pretty. You want cocaine? I'm like, yes. Yes, I do. And I thought to myself like, wow, God really loves me. God, this I'm being blessed with cocaine tonight. So he's like, follow me. So I just followed his SUV, go down a corner, park my car. I mean, it's, I just put it in park. It's still running. He parks his car in front of me. This is just a random street corner off of sunset, like a random neighborhood. This guy gets out of his car, walks over 
to where my my driver's side door is. I roll down the window and he has a little dime bag, just like the one that I found last night. And he scoops out his key and gives me just a big ass key bump. And I snort it and I say, God bless you. You're amazing. And he's like, God bless you too. He literally said, God bless you too. He got into his car. I got into my car and I went to the comedy store and I just thought, wow, this is, I'm just so blessed. Anyways, my point of that story is that is how reckless I was with my cocaine use. It was like someone said cocaine and I was like, I'm there. You know what I mean? I didn't know that person. That could have been laced with some shit. And I don't know, but I fucking did it. Anyways, so um, that's true, Prob Joe. Sobriety leads to great rewards. Yeah, uh, it is crazy. That absolutely is crazy. But that just shows when you are in the depths of addiction, um, you'll fucking do some wild ass shit. And again, that's how I know that God is real because there are so many times in my life that I did not make the best decisions. And if if God wasn't real and this was just based on like all my decisions, I should be dead. I should be dead. But I did have that hand of protection on me because I think that I was meant to go through those experiences to get to this point of where I get to choose to be sober. And I can share this story with you to where it's like, if you're cur- if you're struggling right now, I don't judge you. Okay, I really don't judge you. And just know that sobriety is possible. It is fucking possible. If I can get sober, anybody can get sober. So um, anyways, I after I called Prob Joe, I left the bathroom and I and I just went out of the bathroom and I went back to the comedy club because we were about to have a second show. So then I ran into the man, the manager of the comedy club, this awesome chick. Her name's Jessica. And um, I was like, Jessica, there was cocaine in the bathroom. And she was like, yeah, I went into the bathroom after you. I, I picked it up with toilet paper and I flushed it down the toilet. And she was like, Lila, I thought that that was your cocaine. And I was like, oh my God, did she relapse or something? And I was like, girl, that was not my cocaine. If that was my cocaine that I had brought in, it, I would not have forgotten it. Okay. I would have, it would have been ingested. It would have been snorted. There, there's no way I would have just left my cocaine in there. So she flushed it down the toilet. And this is what I think is so funny about the fa- the fact that she flushed it down the toilet is that the idea of throwing it away or flushing it down the toilet, I had so many like thoughts of what to do in my mind, but I never once thought, oh, throw it in the trash, flush it down the toilet. That was never a, a-, a thought that occurred to me at all. I, I was not... Like, just throw it away. No, that was not my freaking thought process. The only time that I ever, I have a a, a story of when I did flush drugs down the toilet, though. So um, this is not, December 27th of 2022 uh, is not my first sobriety date, okay? I have been in and out of sobriety since I was 24, Okay. The longest I had without drinking was four years and four years without Adderall, but I still was smoking weed at the time. But um, when I was 26 and I had six months sober off of Adderall, I remember I went to a nightclub in Los Angeles and I went to the bathroom and in the bathroom, somebody had left their extra small leather jacket. And I was like, oh my God, This was a gift from the universe for me being sober. I'm going to take this jacket. I put the jacket on. The jacket like fit like a glove. It was the cutest freaking jacket. I remember I walked out. Me and my friend went to another bar. We were just hanging out. Like I wasn't drinking. I See, here's the thing. Without alcohol um, or drugs, like I can still be super social. And I I love to just be around people. You know, like I feel like I get energy from being around people. So um, I got home that night and I reached into the pocket of the jacket. I just randomly put my hands in the pocket like this. And I pulled out a whole prescription of Adderall. And it was like the orange and blue pills, which were at the time my favorite instant release Adderall. And I was like, wow, am I being tested by the universe? And I called one of my friends who was sober, my friend Rick, and I told him what had happened. He was like, Lila, you need to flush them down the toilet. And I was like, no, I don't want to flush them down the toilet. And he was like, you need to flush them down the toilet. That's what you have to do. And when I tell you guys, I put them in the toilet 
I stared at them while they were in the toilet bowl water, okay? And they were kind of like dissipating the blue and the green. I stared at them and I cried. I was fucking crying as they were being flushed down the toilet. I was crying because I just couldn't believe that I was flushing down this drug that I was so addicted to, even though I hadn't done it in six months, okay? I flushed it down the toilet. And then the next morning I woke up and I felt like I was hung over because that's how emotionally like spent I was from the whole experience. But yeah, those are the two times in my life that now finding the Adderall and then finding the cocaine, the two times in my life that I think I was like really tested. And I totally feel like I passed the test and I didn't do it. But I mean, like, how does just fucking the whole bag of cocaine just magically appear? Um, but I'm really proud of myself, you guys. That really did take a lot for me not to do it. And even with 416 days completely sober, you know, I still had all those like racing thoughts in my mind of like, what do I do? So anyways, I just wanted to share that with you guys. I'm so proud of myself that I didn't snort it or keep it. I don't know if I'm allowed to like... I would show you guys like the picture, but I don't know if you're allowed to like show that on YouTube. Um, I don't know why I decided to have a freaking photo shoot with the goddamn little baggie of it. That also makes me laugh because it was like at one point I was like, I put, I put the little baggie down and like, I like zoomed it, zoomed up on it for the photo. And then I like zoomed out and then I was like going around. I'm like, what am I doing? Why is this photo shoot situation happening? Like what the hell? So, and Prob Joe was like, that wasn't my thought either. It was just leave it where it was found. Yeah. That, that's so funny. Yeah. Neither one of us were like, throw it in the garbage, throw it away, flush it. It was just like, leave it, just fucking leave it. Don't do anything. And I think it's hilarious that the manager thought it was mine. Cause she was like, you were in there for a long time. And I was like, yeah, I was in there for a long time taking photos of the shit. I was, I was doing a goddamn photo shoot. That's what I was doing. She was like, she probably thought I was doing drugs. Aw. We saw 101. We are definitely proud of you, Lila. Yeah, I, uh, you guys, I am just amazed that I didn't do it. Oh, okay. Let's watch this clip. We'll go to another segment. I asked a very important question on Alex Stein's show, and we'll watch it. Would you rather sleep with Joe Biden or jack off a dog? <laughs> sleep with Joe Biden. Oh. Sleep with Joe Biden, the president. president. Yeah, I would definitely TMZ it, and I'd go viral as hell, dude. Imagine a selfie with Joe Biden's dick in my mouth, dude. I'm getting 10 million hits. What are you picking? Mm, that's really hard. <sighs> Can I think about it? No, no jack no, off the right dog. Now. I think you want to jack the dog. No, do not. I don't know if we can say that. You're Filipina. She like they, they treat they treat dogs like cattle there. They don't even care. Oh, great. Would you rather sleep with Joe Biden or jack off a dog? <laughs> sleep with Joe Biden. Oh. So sleep I have to tell you guys, the, the I did do a. Um, yeah, I would definitely TMZ it. I I definitely did do a. Where is it? Oh, what? Oh, where's the comments? Here it goes. I'll show this to you guys. Look at this. Who would you rather jerk off, a dog or Biden? And 83% of the votes went to a dog. So I'm not crazy. Oh. And, okay, I think Prabhupada brings up a really good point. Everyone is on a different healing journey and it would be as me on my height of vaping and I dropped my vape pen in the bathroom and it was gone when I went back. It would have broken me. Yeah, someone was definitely brokenhearted who uh, had that much cocaine and lost it. I'm sure that they were broken fucking hearted. Okay. Here's another clip from... Okay. 
want to show you guys another clip. I bookmarked all these. I'm so proud of myself for doing this bookmarking situation. But now I have to scroll, scroll, scroll. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Okay. This is also another clip I wanted to show you guys because it's so important. In it. Come Keep on. Shaking it. It. Shaking it. Shaking it. I didn't have music. Yeah. I didn't have music. She's back out of retirement. She's back out of retirement. Yeah. 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 She's going to yeah. keep shaking it. Come keep on. Keep shaking it. I didn't have music. I didn't have music. Shake it. 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 Shake it little spanky thing i think my little spanky thing was just so cute my little spanky thing oh that's another thing i booked mark it was like an interesting story maybe we'll i'll read it to you guys i want to know the thoughts oh my gosh i'm gonna show you something else too okay then the cutest. I want to, okay, I want to know your guys' opinion on this. Let me go to this one second. I have to, I have to show you guys this. This is amazing. And it's so fitting. Wait, oh, I need to go back. One second, guys. We're having so much fun. We've just hit the first hour of late night Lila. So fucking killing it. Okay. I didn't think that I was going to get to post this video, but I'm so happy that I, uh, Brittany Venti posted this, uh, of a, it was some girl's, uh, Valentine's day basket. And I think the girl was saying, cousins, look what he got me. Should I break up with him? And it was like a, a cute little Valentine's Day basket. And Brittany cracks me up. She was like, girl, I'm sorry, but he hates you. <laughs> Anyways, I mean, here's how I feel about it. Maybe these are all of her favorite things, okay? Maybe she loves kisses and Cheez-Its and Ruffles and Sprite. Like, imagine if those were like your favorite things. So this is really cute. But I have to tell you guys, I witnessed the most incredible, Incredible, cutest, cutest thing last night. Uh, one of my girlfriends, Nikita, she works at TK. She's a, a waitress there. And her boyfriend came in and brought her a Valentine's Day basket. And I was so impressed by this. I am going to play. I, I had to take a video. I, I was I was like, this is incredible. I was hyping them up because this was just so, and the reason I'm even showing you guys this is because, um, is because she actually just texted me and she's like, oh my gosh. She just texted me. She's like, you guys will see this. She's like, in one of the letters, he says, your smile could make flowers grow in an empty garden. Oh my God. Anyways, let me just tell you, her boyfriend gave her the sweetest freaking basket and I'm going to play it for you guys here. One second. I think, Bro, ten. I think my commentary is just so hilarious. So that's why we're going to watch it because it's so funny. Here's my commentary on this incredible gift basket. Bro, 10 letters. 10. If a man wants to, he will. <laughs> okay. If he wants to, he will. Bro, 10 letters. Look at these 10 letters. 10 letters, girl. Oh, my God. Oh, it's open first. Open second. Open when you want to know things that make me think of you. Holy shit. Open when you need the... Hear the magic word. Open when you want to remember the night we met. Oh my God, open when you're happy. Open when you miss me. Open if you need a laugh. Ha 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 ha. Open this when you feel sad. Open this if you feel distant. Open this if you are mad at someone. Open this when you are sick. Open this when you need another laugh. Holy shit. Open if you feel like you're annoying your sister. Wow, he put work into this. Girl, he put work work into this she's so pretty she's so freaking gorgeous she deserves it so happy this, this was girl so in her cute. princess era we love to see it look 
I love you. Well, all this stuff. There's so much. The, the, the basket is deep. It is a Look deep, how deep basket, that basket okay? is. It is and deep. The basket there. was so from home. She, she didn't even halfway done. She's been here for like 20 minutes already. Wow. We love to see it, girl. We love to see it. Oh my gosh, you guys. It was so freaking cute. And apparently, he drove like an hour to come to her work give her her valentine's day goodie basket like imagine being at work your waitress it's it, it's it's so freaking busy you're dealing with all these crazy customers and then here comes your cute ass boyfriend with a big ass basket a home goods basket a good ass basket like it was a deep basket there was a lot of sheet in there it was a big basket that basket was a basket of goodness that basket there was a blanket in there that basket had that it had uh like spa stuff in there that basket had thought i mean you could just tell this man was so in love with her because he listens it's like it's probably like everything she's ever mentioned she likes or wants as a woman and the thing i appreciate about the most was the fact that a lot of girls are like oh my god i don't like flowers i don't like candy i don't like i don't i don't want anything for valentine's day that's a lie. That's a lie. Because who wouldn't want a deep ass basket like that? A home goods basket. Okay, I got home good basket right here. Look at this home. I use home good baskets. Look, I use home good baskets for my plants. Okay. I love home goods. I'm a I'm I'm all about home goods. So I was like, I know that's a nice ass basket that he got her because that is a real ass good ass basket. Anyways, he also got her this like little nightie that said like be happy. She was beaming over the moon. She looked so cute and just happy and just like so in her feminine. And it just made me feel really good to see it. You know, I, I really needed to see that goodness after the whole cocaine incident that I was I was in. I went from rejecting the cocaine, leaving the cocaine where I found it. I walked out and then that's what I walked out into. And I got to be the freaking hype woman. You know what I'm saying? That's what was fun about it. It was like, I was saying all the things out loud that she probably wanted to be like, hey, y'all, look at my man. Look at what my man did for me, y'all. Look at these, look at all these 10 cards. Look at this shit. But she didn't have to do that because she had me there. And I was hyping her up. I was like, look at this shit. Are you guys seeing this? Are you seeing this basket of goodness? Do you see this shit? This shit is awesome. And she is so cute and she is so happy. Oh my gosh, let me text her back. We're like, oh. Oh my gosh, that is so darn sweet. She just told me that in one of the letters, it said your smile could make flowers grow in an empty garden. Oh my God, that is so darn cute. That was so freaking cute. I love it. I love it. Oh, piece of meat stuck in my teeth because of the meat I was eating. She was blessed. She was blessed. Yes, I do believe I know what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, sometimes when you are like a good thing is happening to you, it's like it can kind of come off weird if you are the one being like, look at this good shit that's happening to me. Where it's like, sometimes you need a hype woman. You need a hype woman that's like, yo, this shit is dope. Look at this basket. Look at these letters. Are you guys seeing this stuff? Because I got to say, there were other people that were walking around. And you could kind of feel that they were feeling a little bit like salty, you know, like a little, you know, a little bit jealous because who wouldn't be jealous? That shit was dope. But I'm in my place of security where I'm like, I just love to see any woman being treated well. You know what I mean? Like that is what we got to do. We got to support women and we got to support each other being spoiled girlies. Every girl should be in her princess era. And that is exactly what she was. She was in a princess era, okay? She was she was getting spoiled girly treatment. And that is, you know what? We love to see it. Who who wouldn't want to be spoiled like that? And I think, fellas, if you out here and you got a girl, spoil her. Because why not? And again, there was nothing wrong with that basket that uh, Brit Brittany shared, okay? Maybe that is just, maybe that is what he could do for her. And again, that's really sweet. That, that 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 other basket was still so freaking sweet, okay? And there are guys who freaking 
don't give Valentine's Day gifts to anybody. And I hate to say this, fellas. I'm going to be real with you. Valentine's Day is for the women. Okay? Valentine's Day is for the women to receive. It's our fucking day. It is. You get your birthday and Christmas and all that. So Valentine's Day is for us. It is for us. Yes, we love seeing spoiled girlies. We love it. How cute. It was. It was cute as hell. It was so fucking cute. <laughs> March 14th is for the men. We'll give you guys that. March 14th is for you guys. I'll write that down. Um, but yeah, I just thought it was so cute. And I did love that Brittany posted that because it gave me an excuse. <laughs> to post that video because I just took that video last night and I was like I'm obsessed with this video am I gonna get to post this and then uh she posted that basket and I was like this was my comment I was like this is a proper Valentine's Day basket but again you guys I still do feel like the other basket is so sweet okay that I love that balloon a balloon is a must. You got to grow. I love balloons. The balloon is so freaking cute. I love the teddy bear. I do like milk chocolate kisses. I'm a fan of freaking ruffles and I do like cheese it. That Sprite could be replaced with a Coca-Cola and I would have thought this was a cute ass basket. And I still think it's a cute basket. And again, I just think gift giving is so sweet. If you go out of your way to find out what someone truly likes and you fucking can give them that gift or just even like a handwritten card. I just think that's the sweetest thing ever. So yeah. <sighs> Are you guys having fun? I'm in my princess era. I'm in my princess era. I got my tiara. Okay. When I talk about being a spoiled girly, I have to wear my spoiled girly crown. Yeah, so... Anyways, I think the whole point is um, spoil the people you love. Like, life is short, you know? Like, why not get spoiled? It's fun. You can, never, you can never, like, tell someone you love them too much. You know what I'm saying? Like, you really can't. Spread love. Be love. I'm a runner. I'm a track star. Okay. You guys, this has been an incredible stream. Should I eat some of my salad? Should I show you guys my salad? God, the stream has been so good. It's been one for the freaking books. Yes, that is the official Lila Tiara. Um, if you guys want to send me tiaras, I'll wear them on the stream. Okay, here's a salad. I should eat greens. Mm. It's a kale salad. I've been spoiling myself. I went all out for myself this year. Oh, that is a fantastic prop, Joe. Share, uh, share with us, share with the chat, in what ways have you been spoiling yourself and why? Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. It's so good. I'm really proud of myself for eating a salad. It's little things. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. Mm. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. Mm. What's a daikon? Are you guys into hearing the sound of me eating? There's like actual mukbang um, shows. Um. There's actual, um, can you guys believe that? Like people just like, okay. Probably just says, 
I believe I deserve the love that that I freely give to others. I got myself earrings from Costco. I got dressed up and went and got food. Today I got myself my beautiful bouquet of flowers. I love that girl. You got to treat yourself how you want other people to treat you. You know, I think that's really important. Treat yourself how you want other people to treat you. Mm-mm-mm. I feel like I've had a really good week so far. Being on Alex Stein show, being on Normal World. Got to hang out with my friend Melissa, aka Mrs. Nerd Rotic. She came over and we had some tea time. Uh, my new dryer got delivered. Had a great comedy show. Saw cocaine, but didn't do it. It was challenging, but here I am. Mm. Now, I'm hanging out with my friends, my fans, my sweethearts. Get to, it's it's so good. You know, it makes me really happy to see my super sweethearts, which have to be David Hill, Prob Joe Gill. Oh, that's cute. Prob Joe Gill and David Hill. You guys are H and G. <laughs> Saw is awesome. Aw, yes, David, my sweetheart friends. Y'all are my friends. Thanks, Prob Joe. Prob Joe gives me pep talks. Eventually, we'll have Prob Joe make a little commercial. A Prob Joe pep talk for all the sweethearts, and we'll play it. Oh my gosh, you guys. It's so good. Mm. Aw, I think Saw. Saw says, I'm so proud of you. You guys, why is it that people say, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Like, it feels so good. It really does. I think that sometimes we need to hear that. Like, I remember like, The times that my parents have ever told me that, like, they're proud of me, like, always makes me cry. It's like, I think we just want to make our, like, parents proud or make the people we love proud, you know? It's emotional. Mm -mm -mm. What is something that you've done that uh, makes you feel proud? That's right, David. Tell me about a win that you've had lately. One of your big wins. Yes. This is a good one. I wrote in a talk show for a season. That's incredible, Dylan. Yeah, but something... Dylan, you're a Twitch affiliate? That's a big deal. Wow, Saw, that's huge. I went from 270 pounds in 2020, and now I'm down to 205 pounds. It is not easy to lose weight. It is not. So that that takes some dedication and commitment. You should be so proud of yourself. Keep going on the weight loss, man. That's right. We believe in you, Saw. Not a partner yet, though. What are you looking for? What is your ideal partner? Why don't you guys share that with me? What is your ideal partner? While I'm eating. Oh, not a Twitch partner. I thought you said, like, you don't have a partner yet, so you're sad. Like, no partner, no. 
okay. I was like, okay, we can do some matchmaking on here. And Lila, the matchmaker. This is the longest I've ever been sober since I was 18. How long do you have, Prob Joe? Let the chat know. Adam! Adam is in the house. What's up, Adam? We've had a really fun stream. We went over a lot of things. Wow, Prob Joe! 98 days. Let's go, baby. Two more days to 100. That's huge. And Prop Joe is also 98 days of complete sobriety. No alcohol, no cocaine, <laughs> no Adderall, no marijuana. Oh, my gosh. Prop Joe, we are so proud of you. That is freaking huge. So huge. Big fucking deal. You get, you know what that, for, for that, Prob Joe, this is what we're going to give you. Prob Joe, for that, you get, I need to, like, have a little, like, fun, like, cheers for people when they, when they make accomplishments that I'm, like, proud of. Like, a little, like, do 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 like, clips or something. We need to give you like a a prize, a prize clip. I'm trying to see if there's any. Okay, let's do that. I'm trying to open it. Oh, it's not an MP4. Okay, for that we'll give you this. Okay, no. no. I'll give you that. Ninety-eight days. Ninety-eight days. Ninety-eight days. Probably got ninety-eight days. Oh yeah. Ninety-eight days sober. Ninety-eight days sober. Yeah. Wow! 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 Good job. But I think we also have another person we need to celebrate, David, who says, I'm happy that I'm alive because I was in the hospital for two years and a day. The anniversary was on Wednesday. I'm a miracle like our Lila Queenie heart. Wow. We have the awesome miracle in the house. What are we? What is he gonna get? Here's a song for you, David. This is for David Hill. We're happy you're alive, David. We're happy to have you as a sweetheart. You are a miracle, and we're happy you're alive, David Hill, and Prob Joe Gill. Out here doing amazing things. Sobriety and surviving life. Look at this. You guys are amazing. My suit. Oh gosh. I got a little too much with my hand movement. I splashed myself in the face. Let's shout out all these musics. Okay, no. See, that's also what I'm going to have to work on, you guys. I'm going to have to have... I'm going to have to have uh, musics in here. Uh Aww. 
Hugs to the Heart Queen will be next summer in SD 2025. Maybe I'll bring Prabjo with me. She's pretty tiny herself. She can blend in. Oh, yeah. We're having a good time. The chat is still active. Mm. I need to heat this up. Let me tell Eric. I muted myself because I had to tell him. Put it in the microwave for 30 seconds. I got to eat all my meat. All my meat. I got to eat meat and potatoes. Meat and potatoes. Meat and potatoes. Mm -mm. Okay. Wow. Uh, do you guys want to see what else I saved in my... Um, I saved this in my bookmarks because I, I saw this in my bookmark and I was like, you know what? Oh, I, I came across this and I was like, this is something I want to share on my stream. Let's read it. Let's get the chat's opinion. Okay. Well, I'm going to read this to you guys. Something I saw. Uh why was my ex-girlfriend so obsessed with my balls? I'm not going to lie. It was really fucking weird. She did it the most when we watched TV or started cuddling. I have really saggy and soft balls. And when we'd watch TV, I think she was going to give me a hand job. But she just goes straight for my balls and starts squeezing them and touching them and all this shit. We would watch TV a lot to fall asleep, and sometimes she just starts sucking my dick out of nowhere. And then after I came and got soft, she just laid there at the end of the bed, putting her mouth all over my balls and rubbing them and all this shit for sometimes over an hour. The relationship didn't work out, but I've always wondered why she did that. No judgment, but the shit was really fucking weird and makes me cringe when I think about it. What are your thoughts? Please share your thoughts after that story. Sounds like she had a comfort thing. Proud just said, this guy likes it. Well, he claims that he hated it. He claims that it was annoying. And how, like, and, it, and it's cringe, apparently, that she was just so obsessed with his balls. You know what I mean? It was cringe, according to him. What was that about? Was it cringe? This guy asked for it and now he misses it. You know, I think Prob Joe is on to something. Right here. Sounds like something guys say when they are annoyed that they don't get it anymore. You know what? I think Prob Joe's on to something. Also sounds like a humble brag a little bit, you know, like, oh my God, I've got balls that my ex-girlfriend just used to suck on and she would just suck on my balls and uh, ugh, it was so annoying. Oh, I, it was so annoying that I have to write about it on, on the internet so you guys can know how annoying it is. I wish someone would be obsessed with my balls. <laughs> David Hill said, we'll let Prabhu and Lila talk about this. Oh, my gosh. Little philosophers, I wish I could eat as much as you damn. Well, I just assaulted you that. Oh, my gosh. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Mm -hmm. Probably just said I once had a guy complain about it and then I stopped doing it and then he asked for it. They complain until you stop with the balls. That's funny. I like how David's like, I'm staying out of this. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Hmm. So, Saw says, I just got done eating protein and yogurt and cottage cheese. Was it good? 
Was it good? Was it delicious? Little philosophy has no opinion on the matter. Okay, well, I have another story to read. So to me, it seems as if guys complains when they have it too often and then complain when it's not enough. Just fucking complains in this bitch. Okay, next one. I have another story I wanted to read. I need to know your guys' thought on this because I saved this story because I was like, this is a story for late night, Lila. I have another story and I want to know your thoughts. I think that's what I'm going to be doing throughout the week. If I see interesting things on Twitter, I'll just bookmark it and uh, then we can talk about it. Because that happens to me all the time. I'll see something on Twitter and I'll be like, oh my God, this is interesting. And then it just like disappears. Well, and also it's like, I don't necessarily want to like it because it's like a little weird. So I don't want to be saved in my like tabs. But now that I figured out I could just bookmark it, I could bookmark it for the week or for whatever the fuck's going on. Okay. Is the next story as charming as the ball suckler? I don't know if I'd call it charming, but I think it'll open up. They can. I didn't know that. <laughs> the only people can see your bookmarks. Well, well, damn. I thought it was just my private thing. Whatever. You also retweet. Yeah. I want to read you guys this next story. But I also want to eat this meat. I just thought the ball sucking story was so funny. Like, this fucking guy is writing about how annoying his ex-girlfriend was. For wanting to suck on his balls. Like, what? What? Why would you write about that? Sounds like you're just trying to cope with the fact that you guys aren't together anymore. I think that's, I think Prob Joe is correct on that actually. He probably misses it. And in order to make himself feel better, he's like, I hated it. It was awful. Oh my God. All this dick sucking was just too much. Pablo says, I'm sure she messaged him and said she would suck on his balls. He'd be running over there. Oh, my God. That's so funny. That's so fucking funny. <clears throat> yeah. Him writing on Reddit is a fucking cope. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Well, thank you, Saw. I really appreciate everything you do to promote my stuff, share my stuff. Such a really kind of you to do. Okay, I'm going to read you guys the next story. Maybe that's another thing I should do. I should just save Reddit stories and I'll read them out loud for Late Night Lila and we'll discuss them. I like my hat. It matches my runner track star outfit. I'm a runner. I'm a track star. Hmm. They are. They're fucking unhinged.
Thanks, David. You guys, these potatoes are making me so tired, but I think it's good. Oh, what is this? Reddit Tulpa? What is that? I'm going to look it up. What is it? It's forbidden. What is so unhinged about it? It's forbidden, Reddit. Am I the asshole from Reddit? Okay. Let's see. Reddit. Oh gosh. Okay. Imagine a bunch of people with imaginary friends that are sleeping with said imaginary friends. I can't imagine that. What are you talking about? There's this one I read in particular, but I think they deleted it. Well, give us um, the cliff notes. Daybreak. Give us the cliff notes of the story that you read. Okay. This is so good. Okay. Oh my gosh, I just ate. It's Buddhist philosophy gone schizo. That sounds like it would be hard to keep track of. Okay, we're going to read this next story. I've got it prepared and set up. Let me have a little drink of my health aid kombucha. Mmm. We've had a good time. We've had a great show. Uh, 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 uh. Let's see if my mom's watching. Should we call her? I'm going to call her. I'm going to put it on pause. Okay, there's my mom, you guys. Say hi, mom. Hey, guys. There she is. She's at Casino. <laughs> there is Esther Hart. Yay! Hello. Okay, mom. Love you. Have a good time. I'll talk okay, to you later. Thank you, honey. Bye. Okay. okay, there's my mom. That was so cute. That was so adorable. One second. Okay. That was so cute. Hi, Esper. Are you winning? <laughs> okay. Are you guys ready for this story? And I'm going to read to you. Here it is. My husband just spent $1,400 on women's clothes. Hey, we're having a big fight about this. He came out less than a week ago to me and not to anyone else yet, but he plans to and he's still using he pronouns. 
but he ordered $1,400 of clothes online and they came today. And I feel so mad about it because it's a lot of money. We have a two-year-old daughter and I'm seven months pregnant with our son. And we needed that money for them as that is always 100% the priority. So I'm mad that he's wasting money on this. But he was like saying that this was a fine and claimed that the average girl spends $400 a month. What the fuck? Still don't know how he got this from on clothes. And so this was three months worth. And since it was the first time he didn't have any, it was fine. And we're having a big fight about all this. It's just so soon. And he's not even wearing them out. Just seems like it's a massive waste of money. And then he started talking about how he makes $5,000 more than me per year, that this was from that difference. And this made me really angry. And I found it very patronizing. And I told him that he only made more because he was a man. And this is really upsetting him. And he found it super triggering, which I thought was kind of pathetic. I also feel like he wasn't honest about it before he said he wanted to order a couple of things to try out. And I was like, fine. But now he ordered $400 worth, which just seems absurdly high amount. Also, if he was just ordering dresses and actual outfits, I could kind of understand. But he was ordering lots of underwear and lingerie, which I found really weird. Like, why would you order a bra when you don't even have boobs? It makes no sense to me. But then he got upset when I pointed it out. And I don't really know how to deal with this. Also, sorry if this is TMI, but I walked into our room while he was standing looking at himself in the mirror in this new underwear, and he had a boner, which I found so weird. And I don't understand why he would buy this at all. I just feel, I just can't help but feel like something is wrong about this. And I'm trying to understand, but I feel so mad and need advice on processing this all. Wow. Wow. She needs advice on processing this. And she, I think she has every right to be mad. $1,400 is a lot of money to spend on clothes. Like, sounds like, first of all, he was not even looking at no deals. He wasn't buying anything on discount. He was going full price. Full price, Victoria's Secret. They have a semi-annual sale. He could have waited for the sale, but that was not what he was doing. He was not about going on sale for anything. He was going full price. Papa goes, I have boobs and I don't even like wearing a bra. It's so funny. Okay. You guys, I have to play a commercial because I've got to um, get more tea. I believe he gets aroused by dressing in women's lingerie is, is a fetish. Okay. Talk amongst yourself. I'm going to play a commercial. I'll be right back. And I'm going to fill up my tea. Okay. I'll see you guys in a second. I wish there was an easier way to whiten my teeth. Did someone say wish? Who are you, the tooth fairy? No, I'm even better. I'm the Loomis Genie, here to make all your teeth whitening wishes come true. I heard you wish that teeth whitening could be easier. Did you know with Loomis you could relax, drink, talk, and exercise while whitening your teeth? First, all you have to do is apply these easy whitening strips. Easy application. Get excited. Wow. <laughs> Let's put it on. With Lumis, the application process is quick and easy. With these strips, you can still talk easily. You can drink water. Oh, wow. I can still talk. And you can relax. Relaxing while teeth whitening with Lumis. Are you relaxed? You can exercise, exercising while whitening our teeth with lumen. Yeah, we're having fun and teeth whitening. <laughs> with lumen beauty. Go, Alan. Come on, whiten those teeth. And you can have a great day all while teeth whitening very quickly. Loomis, the Loomis Genie, here to make all your teeth whitening wishes come true. Teeth whitening with Loomis. You can drink water too. And have your teeth as white as this cat. Hello. 
<sighs> okay. Um, what do you believe, men? That's what Prabhu was asking in the chat. Uh, thank you, David. Lila Jeannie Hart is so pretty. Thank you. I, I was a genie. I think he's into cross-dressing or he's having a breakdown leading to feminization dysphoria. You know what? Maybe he, I think he is having a breakdown. And also, I think the worst part about it is that the wife is over here pregnant with the kids. Um, well, she's they have a little baby and then she's pregnant with her second child. And he, instead of like being the man of the house and helping her prepare for the second arrival of this baby, he is over here standing around in women's lingerie and having boners in the mirror. And she has to walk in to him doing this. What the hell? But it's again. Again. Oh, shit. I'm muted again. God damn it. Damn. Uh. I'm here. I'm back. What did I even say? Um, I was like, what I was trying to tell you guys was that I think this woman is very sweet that like she even said on here like, oh, do I have a right to be mad? I'm like trying to process this. Like she's still trying to be supportive to her husband who clearly does not want to be like <sighs> prepare to be a dad he he would rather stand in the mirror with a burnt boner yes maybe he's a sweet transvestite from transsexual transylvania and again i think it's very sweet that she wants to stand by her husband still she clearly like still loves him like she the fact that she's not even like she's not upset that he wants to wear women's clothes. She's upset that he is spending an absurd amount of money, $1,400 on clothes when it's like, yo, did he not go to the sales section? Did he not go to the sales section? Did he not wait for the semi-annual sale? Huh? Sounds like he didn't. Oh my gosh. Speaking of sale, I have to make sure that the sale is still happening. Okay, I have one hour for the sale. Is it still happening? Hold on, you guys. I have to order this. There's a 25% off sale. If I miss the sale, I'm going to be so sad. It's okay. I'll deal with it later. True. If he bought her $1,500 in maternity clothes, because I'm sure none of her clothes are fitting, uh, she wouldn't be upset. Because even she said, she was like, I wouldn't have mind if they were dresses. Because she's probably thinking like, we're the same size. We could wear the same thing. But this motherfucker is over here ordering lingerie. She's like, I am pregnant as fuck right now. I don't want to wear this lingerie that you just ordered for yourself, having boners in these fucking lingeries. <laughs> True. Imagine going shopping with your husband for a dress. And he goes, wow, this dress is nice. And the wife says, for me? And he says, no, for me. I mean, damn. And that's crazy. I'm sure she didn't know that he was – she even said he only just came out. So what is – did he come out as what? Like, he came out and she's the only person – no, what is he coming out as? I mean, it's just a lot. Okay. What else? What else, guys? Oh. Okay. Let me see what else is happening. You guys, this has been so much fun tonight. I've had a blast. You think so? A little philosophy, a little philosophy with some philosophy for us. I think it comes from too much se sexual stimulation from other sources. Yeah, something weird is going on, you know, and I feel bad for the wife because she should be, Prop Joe's right, she should be getting $1,400 worth of stuff. 
instead of him just getting $1,400 of clothes for himself. I wish I had bookmarked other things I wanted to talk to you guys about. Let me see if there's anything in my... What? Okay, let me see if there's anything on my profile like list that I can tell you guys about. It's my elevator music while I scroll. I was just liking a lot of people's comments back. I've got a lot of support from people. Um, uh, over my Little Women LA clip, which was great. It's so nice that they were so supportive. Actually, I'm going to tell you guys this. This is um, part of what even prompted me to... Uh, to uh, talk about um, not apologizing for jokes is there is a comedian recently who went um, pretty viral online. He's a very funny guy. He's a roast battler comedian. His name is David Lucas. Eric actually roasted, roast battled him in 2016 at the comedy store. And Eric won. Eric is a very good roaster. Um, but he had a joke about George Floyd and um, it upset people and the clip went pretty viral. And anyways, let me let me show it to you guys. We'll talk about that. Okay, let me bookmark this because I'm going to show you this too. Um, let's see this. So this is... It's loading. It's loading. One second. Okay. What did he say? What's this? Like? I think it's like a three minute clip. Okay, hold on. Let's. Okay, here it goes. Is it? This is where he got um, right here. We'll watch this. Oh. oh man, all these fucking good ass white people at my show. <laughs> and you want to show them the reason George Floyd got his neck nailed on. <laughs> Don't ooh at that joke. It's just a joke, man. I would have never kneeled on George Floyd's neck. I would have shot that nigga. That was <laughs> Making us look. It's called comedy, nigga. I remember black fans. I got to hit that Mike Lee. Oh, good shit, man. I got, I got. Cause nigga, I was just warming up with that George Floyd shit. You ready to go? All right, baby. Okay. All right, you offended too, baby, with the braids? Right. You offended too? God damn, man, fuck. Y'all good? Or y'all about to... Oh, I am I like Kyle Rittenhouse too. <laughs> I like Kyle Rittenhouse too. You too, bro? God damn, bro. Oh, but you fuck with me a little bit, right? This is funny. Uh, I would, I would yeah. have made a joke on that, though. Damn, one more guy. Damn, man. 
He's handling this very well. He's handling this really well. He like, man, I don't like George Floyd either, man. That nigga, that nigga had fitting on. God damn, you got a stoop low for a joke. I thought he handled this really well. And originally he this this video went viral. I think we talked about it on Simcast a bit. Um, but first of all, I, I really he was being funny. The people obviously got offended and they got up and left. And here's also what's interesting, I think, about like the internet now. Like nothing is like sacred anymore. Like it if if this was just at the comedy club and that would have happened, okay, people would have been offended. They would have left. And it's like, that's the end of it. But the fact that this was like filmed and now it's put on the internet and like all these people can dissect it and like say, oh, he was offensive. And how could he say that? And it's like, I bet if you were in that room, you would have felt the vibe of comedy and understand that these are jokes. And also another thing I liked about David Lucas is even as the people were leaving, he was still making jokes about it. Like when he like fist bumped that guy and he was like, oh, you fuck with me, but you know, she's upset. You got to go. Or like, oh, your ride's leaving. You don't really want to go. Like, I feel like he still handled that really, really well because doing stand-up is first of all, is hard as fuck. And especially when you're facing like rejection or like there's people like opposing you and don't like you. And like the fact that he was still able to make that funny was freaking awesome. Now I'm going to play for you guys uh, Eric's roast battle between David, Eric. So we're going to play. David, Eric, I'll be ready. Okay, hold on. I'm going to play this for you guys. It's Eric and David's roast battle. I think this was in 2016. I'm just going to show you like how far – we have like strayed from stand up because I feel like you couldn't do this now. So we'll pl play it for you guys. Here you go. We'll watch it. Okay. Hey, when I say we're ready, you guys gotta lose your Bad fucking mind. Lose your Bad fucking mind. Bad this is actually comedy. Let's rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eric is a Jew. <laughs> the only reason he got a black girl is because he heard you can feed an African child for 10 cents a day. Eric and I were not dating at this time. We had a different girlfriend and she was black. All right, all right, Malcolm Checks Mix. All right. <laughs> Uh, David calls his daughter Boo because one day he's gonna ghost her. Nigga, that shit was whack as fuck, bitch. You look like an out of work Keebler elf. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Old dirty breadstick, all right. <laughs> Thank you, uh, thank you, honey. I shrunk a Jew. <laughs> honey, I shrunk a Jew. You're, you're welcome. A tribe called Chicken Breast. A tribe called Chicken Breast. Motherfucker, you look, you look like a hipster leprechaun. <laughs> you dirty than a motherfucker. Keep going. Keep going, David. David, looking at you, I can't tell what's been arrested more, you or your heart. Appreciate that, hipster Chucky. We all know Eric is the bitch of his relationship. His girl make him scream out nigga when they fuck. <laughs> hey. That's what it looked like this nigga been doing all day in them raggedy ass pants taking a knee. Hey, hey, you know what David just did there? He broke the fourth wall. But usually when he does that, he goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> Kool-Aid reference, y'all like, no, no. Keep it going. Here you, we go. David Lucas. You, you, you. Yeah, give it Definitely, definitely the best battle of the night. Give it up for these guys.
Yes, we got to keep going, man. I mean, all right. We got to keep going. I'm, I'm just, I just, I just heard a fucking Kool-Aid joke. I don't think we can keep going. We got to. Not we got to, man. Like it's too show. close. This is too close? This show racist. You're right. Thank you, all nigga wave. All right. You want one more? You were first. Your first is time. Overtime, let's roll. This is in the belly store at the comedy store. David, you look like Ice Cube if he messed around and ate a triple double. <laughs> I, I I appreciate that you cracked out Bilbo Baggins. <laughs> you look like Robert E. Lee fucked the Hobbit. One last joke. <laughs> All right, that'll do it. Keep it going, Eric Evidente, David Lucas. It's great work, you two. And I love how they shook hands. Uh, uh, Coach these are jokes, All right, this is a perfect people. example of, you know, David, you had it. You fucking were killing it. It doesn't matter who wins wins or loses. It matters that you both killed. So you got to leave the audience wanting more. Calling for your own overtime is and That's ridiculous. Jeff Ross talking right now. But that having been said, I still think both of you are fucking hilarious. You had good chemistry. Like, your timing back and forth with yeah. your quick jokes was so funny to watch. So that was cool. Very entertaining. There was a lot of jokes. David and uh, what's his face? Yeah. Bars, who we like in this one? Sweetie, you just sweetie. <laughs> you that was, you guys were that was fun. That was fun to watch. That yeah. was a, that was very clever, and y'all make me feel stupid, but y'all were good. Y'all were good. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Like it was great how oh, there was a, a lot say, of back uh, and forth. There was a lot of jokes in between the main David, group. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Jew. <laughs> yeah, I mean that was so fucking good, you guys. I mean, you come out and just call him a Jew, which love the simplicity of that, and then, <laughs> Hell yeah. and then you with the Kool Aid joke. It was so good, but you said I look oh, like yeah. porn, so I have to go with you. Damn. Teacher porn gets it. I thought that was great. her. <laughs> oh, CP. Jeez, a man, hey. Harvey Brian. That's all right, Harvey Weinstein's right really now. turned all these ladies against the Jews, huh? Too soon? All right. <laughs> that was a really cool thing, because, like, every time you'd hit him hard, he'd come around with some name, and then it turned kind of into the name thing. Uh, <laughs> like, there, that first round, it just devolved into names. <laughs> and then, awesome. the set, you know, then it got better. But um, <laughs> uh, just because of the last one, I got to give it to the Jew. You don't like this, Justin. You didn't like this. Who did you like in this one? Here we go. I wanted to go with the black guy with no arms. <laughs> that was funny. It was good. It's good yeah. battle. Healthy. Before we ask the audience, who did you like in this one? Uh, what's your name again? Eric. I keep spacing out. I'm a little jet lag. You know, it was a really tough one. I thought in the end, ah, fuck. I, I don't know. I thought it was pretty even. If you want to score it, it was almost, it was almost perfect till the last round. And then I thought you both fucking clunked it. So, <laughs> I mean, that's it's a tough true. one. I let the audience decide. Let's see what the audience. It does. was a great hey, battle. Do you like David Lucas? Come on, go. Eric Evanante. Yo, winner, uh, Eric Evanante. Hug each other. Oh, that was awesome. And that is how it's done. That's how it was done in 2016, okay? You guys could go watch a roast battle, battle, watch people roast the shit out of each other. And, like, these weren't nice jokes. These, these were mean jokes. But people understood that this is comedy. This is stand-up. It's like that's why they shake hands. And it was a very – I mean, that was just what, like Jeff Ross said, it was actually like a perfect battle because it was very even. Like for every joke that David had to make fun of Eric, they, like, so like in Roast Battle, you have like three, you get like three main jokes, but the fact that they, like there was a ton of jokes in there. There was a lot of like insults in between. It was like a dance. Anyways, it was fucking awesome. And I just wanted to show you guys that so you guys could really see like 
David Lucas is fucking hilarious. Eric is obviously funny too. But David is, this is what they do. It's like, it's a roast battle. It's a comedian. Like there's no apologies that need to be made. So anyways, um, when I saw that clip of him making fun of George Floyd, it's like, yeah, of course, he's going to make fun of everybody. He makes fun of everybody. Like that's part of what you're supposed to do as a comedian. It's like, there's nothing and no one off limits. Like midgets are not off limits. I'm going to make fun of midgets, you know? <laughs> so anyways, but I was very surprised to see this, which is what I'm going to share. And I actually saw it from my friend Chrissy Mayer who shared this. And before I share his apology, I'm going, he, he made an apology. I'm going to read what Chrissy wrote. She goes, please read the whole thing. David Lucas apologized for making a George Floyd joke on stage. This, as always, sets the dangerous precedent of giving the cancel mob a win and empowers them to move the goalpost further for what it is acceptable speech, so much that eventually we won't be able to breathe, like a knee to the throat that chokes the life out of comedy. Their threats are just like that. Threats, like holding a gun to the stomach of a pregnant woman. Jokes, unlike fentanyl, never kill or injure anyone. Any hurt from a joke is a counterfeit feeling. No individual or group is exempt from jokes. Offend everyone as often as possible. And I agree. I'm like, nobody should be exempt from stand-up. You know, the human rights cancel ruin comedy. <laughs> Okay, so let's play this clip and let's hear how he, Hi, this is comedian. how he is apologizing. Let's let's listen. Hi, this is comedian David Lucas. Uh, you know me from Kill Tony and other various road shows. Uh, I'm an edgy, uh, push the boundary comedian. And uh, my job as a comedian is to bring humor in dire situations. With that being said, there's a clip that is circulating around social media. And um, since that clip has came out, I have spoken to a lot of George Floyd's family. I spoke to Cal Wayne, Trader Truth, Steven Jackson. And uh, my intention was to never cause harm to his family or make them revisit a moment that happened a few years ago. Uh, I'm a father, so I get it. I understand how his kids feel. I've spoken to his whole family and um, we've came, uh, you know, to an understanding as to how to move forward from this. And uh, just want to apologize to his kids and everybody who was close to him. Hi, this is comedian David Lucas. Uh, you um, know me from Kill Tony and other various. I just feel like it's really interesting that he was made to apologize like this. It feels like he was like kind of like forced to apologize, right? And um, I do, that's what Prabhjo says right here. This poor man was getting death threats. I'm sure he was. He was getting death threats and uh, over jokes, over a joke. He was absolutely forced to. Yeah, he was forced to. And it may like that looks like a hostage video. That looks like a goddamn hostage situation. Like, hi, my name is. This is what I do. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, you know, and it's like, and then I saw this other uh, he posted that on Instagram. And then I think he was getting a lot of flack from people like commenting, like, oh my God, like, why would you apologize? And then he deleted it. And then there was one post where he said that he didn't apologize for the joke, but he just apologized to the family. And it's like, okay, well, if you're just apologizing to the family, then just apologize to them. But the fact that you have to publicly post this makes it feel like, I just, I agree with Chrissy completely that this hurts stand up and it sets a really bad precedent. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's it's really sad. And it, it like it just really goes to show like how far we've strayed, you know, like watching that roast battle between David and Eric and how, how much fun that was and how everybody is like understanding that these are jokes and you're like people could think that of these as like insults, but it's like no, these are this is comedy jokes and two comedians are on stage and and, and showing you like how these are like really like they're really fucking ruthless jokes too, but they could sh shake hands and you know, go on a not have any hard feelings because at the end of the day, these are stand-up jokes, right? So 
the fact that this whole thing has gotten so blown out of proportion to where, I mean, like the comments I've read online of uh, what people have said about David Lucas and um, how horrible he is as a person for even saying anything about George Floyd. It's like, he's just making a joke. Okay. It's it, obviously it's, it's horrible. What it, anybody's death is horrible. Okay. Like death is horrible, but it's like, we're humans. We make jokes anyways. Um, makes the stand up look weak. It does make the stand up look weak to apologize. You know, and I, I guess that's also part of why, like I shared my clip from 2016. Like it, when those girls were like ganging up on me and I inside, I was like, I am not going to apologize to you. I'm not going to tell you guys you're right because I, I know in my heart of hearts, you're not right. You're fucking wrong. This is stand up. And just like David, I am not making these jokes to hurt your feelings. I'm making these jokes simply based on an observation of life and making connections. And it, I'm just trying to be funny. This isn't meant to offend you. And if it is offending you, you need to figure out why words are so triggering to you. And that's a you problem, not a I need to cancel this comedian problem and now make death threats. Because death threats are not jokes. That's fucking serious and awful. And George Floyd was no fucking saint. And absolutely, he wasn't a saint. And why are we uplifting him as if he was this almighty, you know, saint person who made such a difference in society? I mean, it is awful what happened to him. But does it mean we shouldn't be allowed to make jokes about it? We should be allowed to joke about anything. And it's like, okay, he's not allowed to make jokes, but you guys are allowed to make fucking death threats to the point where he has to come on like a goddamn hostage and make a public apology. That's absolutely horrible. Comedy should be funny, cool, and entertaining. And people should understand. If you cannot handle the heat, stay out of a comedy club. A comedy club is where nothing should be off fucking limits. If you don't want to watch something like that, don't go to, don't see stand up. Prop Joe says, I've gotten death threats for refusing to inject myself with something I was allergic to. Social media is a wild place. Yeah, it is fucking sad that people think, you know, they want to police what you say, but all of a sudden it's okay to make death threats. Anyways, I just really love the way that Chrissy wrote this because it is, it's freaking bars, actually. My favorite part, like a knee to the throat that chokes the life out of comedy. Their threats are just that, threats, like holding a gun to the stomach of a pregnant woman. Jokes, unlike fentanyl, never kill or injure anyone. Any hurt from a joke is a counterfeit feeling. Oh my gosh. She's so great. That is like, the way she wrote that out is so freaking perfect. And it's true. Jokes don't kill you. Jokes don't hurt you in the same way that drugs and fucking actually putting a gun to someone's head does, okay? Chrissy was just taking heat from her siren joke, which was hilarious. And again, it's a joke. And you can't apologize because if you apologize, there's never an end. She was cooking in the kitchen. If you can't stand the heat, stay out of the kitchen. That's right. If you can't stand the heat. Stay out of the kitchen. That's right. That's freaking right. So, wow, we have gone over a lot of things tonight. Can I jerk that dog? Can I jerk that dog? You gonna jerk that dog or jerk Bert, uh, Joe Biden? Can I jerk that dog? Wow. Guys, this has been a, a lot of fun. Any final messages you want to share with us before we sign out of 
Late night, Lila. We had a good time. Had probiotics. <laughs> you should make a website called Would You Jerk That Dog? Would You Jerk That Dog? I'm a jerk that dog. 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 Mm -mm. I'm a jerk that dog. Aw. Prop Joe says, I'm heading to bed. I'm working in the morning. Well, we are all going to head to bed, actually, because it is time. It is time to go to bed. Oh, yes. And Saw says, definitely do not forget to leave a comment after the show. <laughs> Abel says, if I jerk that dog, can we barbecue it later? Of course. We'll do that. Good night, sweethearts. Yes. Can I jerk that dog? Can I jerk that dog? That would make a good song. I want to jerk that dog. <laughs> okay. Yes. Don't forget to leave a comment after the live stream. Just leave a comment and say how much fun you had hanging out, how much you love being a sweetheart. So we can get those numbers up. Again, we have goals here. We are trying to hit that 3,000 watch time hour monetization. So again, watch the videos on my channel. Leave some comments. Hang out. Aw, David says, good night. God bless and love you tons, Lila BFF. Well, good night to all of you. I love you. Jesus loves you. And you are doing amazing Sticks and stones may break your bones, but jokes will never hurt you. All right? That is where we are leaving it tonight. Stay strong. Be grateful for the gifts. All your five senses. What a gift. You can see. You can taste. You can hear. You can touch. You can feel. Oh, yeah. Can I jerk that dog? Can I jerk that dog? All right, you guys. This has been another Late Night Lila episode. We will see you very, very soon. Good night.